Bruchma Boyim, thank you very much for coming. Uh, tonight we're going to continue in our discussion of the mitzvah, the commandment to uh, wear tefillin. Uh, again, last week we began, and hopefully again today we will finish up on the topic. So, um, we're in the middle of talking about the tefillin. Now, in the Seder of Bo, in the book of uh, Shemot, in verse number 16, chapter 13, verse number 16, the Torah states that the tefillin should be put should be for you as a sign, al yadcha, on your hand. Now the word yadcha can be broken up into two words, yad and ka. Hand and also the word ka is weak. The Kliyakur states that the tefillin shall yad are put on the weaker hand to signify that man has no strength to accomplish anything by himself. All his strength comes from God Almighty, and David Amalek alludes to this in Tehillim in Psalm 16, verse number 8, where it says, Shivisi Hashem Konegdi Tumid, that I place God before me always. <clears throat> now, since, his, since God is always opposite a person, one's left hand is opposite God's right hand. So we put our fill in on our left hand to show our strength is not ours, but is the right hand of God. Again, Shavisi, uh, Shavisi Tamid, not our own. Now, Yad Ka, the word, has a gematria, a numerical value of 39. The same as the word Hashem Echod. God is one. The tefillin are placed on the left hand, and the Hebrew word for left is Simol. According to Kabbalah, the letters Sin and the letter Samach are interchangeable. So we can substitute the sin of the word Samol with a Samach, changing the word Samal to, again, the word to Samal instead of Samol, which is Sutton, which is Satan. So we bind the Sutton with straps of the Tefillin Shel Yad, which allude to one and only God. The number 39 also alludes to the punishment of what we call Malchut. The Malchus is the uh, lashes that are given. So our tefillin protect us from sinning with our hands and then being punished with lashes. Again, based on a base Mordechai. We wear our tefillin shel yad, the, tefillin, the hand tefillin, on our left hand, the weaker one, as a remez, as an indication that it was God who took us out of Egypt. We had no strength of our own. All of our prayers, all of our power comes from God Almighty. And without him, we are weak and powerless. Now, another reason why the tefillin are placed on one's arm is to symbolize the chosek yod, the strong hand that God employed in order to redeem the nation of Israel from Egypt. It is therefore a reminder of all the miracles that God performed for the Jews when he redeemed them based on a tour. Now, the word yad decha is spelled with an extra hey at the end. This comes to teach us that there are five, the numerical value of the letter He, compartments that make up our tefillin. Four in the tefillin shel rosh, in the head, and one in the tefillin shel yad, in the hand. One might think that the tefillin shel yad, the hand tefillin, should have four signs, just like the head. But the verse states, and you shall bind them for a sign on your hand. And the word sign, os, is singular indicating that there is only one sign on your hand based on the Tanchuma. Now the last letter in the first parak of the Tefillin states, Ushmartem esachuka hazot, and you shall keep this statue. <clears throat> the Tanchuma says that from these words we derive that minors, those under the age of 13, are exempt from putting on Tefillin since they are not yet obligated to keep the mitzvot. The verse continues with the word, the moada, in its season. The word is spelled with a vav, and the vav has the numerical value of six, from which the sages learn out that six days of the week we are obligated to put on our tefillin. We do not wear them on Shabbat. Also, there are six holidays where we do not put on tefillin. Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Shemini Atzeret. Now, at the end of the portion of Bo, again, in chapters 13, verse 16, number 16, it states that the tefillin shall rosh, the head tefillin shall be 
the totafot bene necha, as for frontlets between your eyes. Rashi states there, the term denotes plural, since the tefillin shell rosh consists of four compartments. They are called totafot. Rashi based on the Talmud and the Gemara in Sanhedrin. Four, continues that the word tat is Coptic, meaning two, and the word pas is African, means again two, and together they equal four. Now the obvious question has to be why <clears throat> are these two languages, Coptic and African, used to describe the tefillin? So Mordechai Yaffa explains that the tefillin shall rosh, the head tefillin, proclaim that God's rule extends to the extremities of the universe. The strap symbolize the influence which he exerts, <clears throat> excuse me, even to the navel of the earth. Since the two areas, the Caspian Sea and, the Afri and Africa, represent the two general north and south geographic extremes of the earth, they combine their languages to form the name given to the Tefillin Shel Rosh, which represents the rule of God Almighty from one end of the world to the other, based on an H. Yosef. Now, the shin found on the head Tefillin, Tefillin Shel Rosh, has a numerical value of 300. This alludes to the 300 days of the year when a man is obligated to put on to fill in. There are two shins on the box of the head tefillin. One shin has three branches, the other four branches. Each shin has a gematria, a numerical value of 300. So two times three is 600. The two shins together are red. Shin and shin is the word sheish, the Hebrew word for the number six. Add three from the three-headed shin and four from the four-headed shin. You now have 600 plus six plus three plus four. Altogether, 613, the number of commandments in the Torah. The three-branch shin alludes to the three fathers of Israel, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The four-branch shin alludes to the four mothers of Israel, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. Now, in order for us to be successful now and in the future, we must always be connected to our past, our ancestors. The three-headed chin on a person's right represents the three days of the week in which a portion of the Torah is read in the synagogue. The four-headed chin on a person's left represents the four days of the week in which a portion of the Torah is not read in the synagogue, based on the Barak Shamar. <clears throat> now, the three-headed chin alludes again to the three fathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and the three days the Torah is read with a minyan in the synagogue because the obligation to study Torah is only for men. The four-headed chin is for women, alluding to the four-headed four days the Torah is not read in the synagogue, again, since women do not have an obligation to learn Torah. The knot on the back of the head tefillin, tefillin shel rosh, form a dalit, which has numerical value of four. The dalit is on the back of the neck, symbolizing this world and the four directions of the compass. Whereas the shin on the tefillin shel rosh, the, the, of the head, and the yud on the tefillin shel yad, the hand tefillin, symbolize the word, world to come. The shin is on top, and the yud is covered. The numerical value of the shin and the yud together 300 and then 10, 310. And this alludes to the last Mishnah in the, in the tractate of Uxin, which speaks of the 310 worlds that each Sadik, each righteous individual, will receive in the next world. Now, the brain functions properly only because man has a faculty that enables him to store sensations called memory. The knot with which the straps of the head tefillin are, is tied, is placed at the back side of the head, the area near which our memory banks are located in the brain, based on a tour. The verse ends with the double term, miyomim yamima, from year to year. Now since the verse uses the word term yamim, which means day instead of shana, which usually stands for year, we learn that the tefillin are worn during the day and not at night. And since the Torah uses a double term, we learn 
that there are days that we wear tefillin and others such as Shabbat and the Yomim Tovim where we do not wear them. When putting on the tefillin shelyad, the hand tefillin, we make seven wines around our arm. These seven wines correspond to the seven emotional traits that are near the heart. We pray that God will give us the strength to control them. We make three wines around our finger to signify the marriage between God and the Jewish nation, which is alluded to in the book of Hosea, two, chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. Now the tefillin shel rosh, the head tefillin, have two straps that fall from the head down the front of one's body. They signify the flow of the intellect from the brain, which is the seat of the soul, to the rest of the body. The strap on the right alludes to the attribute of kindness, and the other strap on the left alludes to the attribute of severity, gevura. The right strap, the chesed, is longer than the left one, which constitutes a prayer that we should always experience more kindness than severity. When we wear our tefillin, we are engulfed within the name of God Almighty. The name of God is spelled Shin, Dalid, Yud, which means enough. And we don't pronounce it correctly, we call it Shakai. This term was used by God when he first created the world. At the beginning of creation, the world continued to expand, to grow, until God said this world, Shakai, enough. We also find this name of God written on the outside of our mezuzot. The shin is found on the tefillin shel rosh itself. The dalit on the knot of the strap of the tefillin shel rosh it is placed at the back of the skull. And the yud is the knot that is touching the box of the tefillin of the hand. The name of God of mercy, yud ke vavke, is alluded to twice in the tefillin. According to Kabbalah, a square alludes to the four-letter name of God of mercy, which has the gamatria numerical value of 26. How is that? A square is made up of six sides, eight points, and 12 lines. Six and eight is 14, 12 is 26. Again, the miracle value of the yud ke vav ke of God's name of mercy. In addition, according to Kabbalah, way, a Kabbalistic way of counting called the atbash, where we exchange the first letter of the Hebrew letter, letter, alphabet, the aleph, with the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the tuf, and the second letter of the alphabet, a bays, with the second letter, second to last letter, a shin, at, bash. Now, based on this formula, going all the way through, there are 22 letters, so they back and forth. The four letter name of God of mercy, which has a numerical value of 26, would then, in the at, bash, become a numerical value of 300. The same as the letter Shin, which is found on the box of the tefillin of the head. Now, in reading the written Torah, we learn that we are commanded to wear tefillin. However, from the written Torah, we would not know the number of portions, called partios, in the bottom, in the boxes. That there are four portions in the tefillin of the head, and one in the tefillin of the hand. That there are three, there's a three-headed shin on one side of the tefillin of the head and four-headed shin on the other. Or uh, the straps must be black. The details concerning the shape, the squareness, and the stitches, all these are what we call halacha Moshe Misinai, a tradition originated with Moshe at Sinai. Now there are ten aspects of the tefillin that are halacha le Moshe Misinai. Two refer to the way they are written and eight refer to the way they are housed in their straps. The two concerning the way they are written are they are to be written with only black ink and that they must be written on parchment. The eight concerning their housing and straps are number one, that tefillin and its stitching be perfectly square, that the leather be, uh, be shin-shaped on the right and left hand, hand of the head tefillin, Number three, that the partios, that the portions be wrapped in cloth, that the hairs to, to be used to tie the, on the top of the cloth before insertion, that, there be, that they be tied with sinew threads, that they be tunneled through that which the strap can pass, and the straps must be black, and that they be knotted in the shape of a dalid. Again, all of this we, is written in by the Rambam. Now, the relationship between the bottom, the boxes, and the partios, the written portions, 
is comparable to the relationship between the Holy Ark, the tablets, and the Torah. They hold the partios and protect them from the outside world. Thus, the partios command us to keep the entire Torah. The Batim are a miniature Holy Ark, based on Rav Shimshel Rav Hirsch. Now, the Lubavitcher Rebbe made it a point to send out his followers to ask Jewish men on the street and in their places of work to put on to fill in. This goes on even today. Why so much emphasis on this mitzvah? There is a medrash that states that you can't compare an arm that is put on tefillin to one that has not. If you want, one can compare the straps of tefillin to the ropes that hold a large battleship to the dock. The ropes are very inconsequential compared to the ship itself. However, without the ropes, the ship would drift out to sea. So it is the thin ropes that keep the ship connected to the dock. And so too with our tefillin. They may seem very small and inconsequential, but they have the ability to keep us connected to God and his Torah. And with that connection, may we help to herald in the coming of Mashiach Sakenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. And remember to stay tied up.